Good evening. Welcome to the spiritual, but not religious, broadcasting sh show. A spirit. I'm George Lewis. I'm your host. I've got uh, Tom Johnson over here in the booth to my left, who is our uh, executive producer of the show. Tom does a really nice job. He's end up having to be the engineer also. Uh, I'll tell you what, some of the guests that we have, we, we get some really uh, interesting connections. Last week we had uh, one caller was in Great Britain and one caller was in Canada and tonight we've got one caller who's up in Vancouver and one caller who's over in Miami, one guest who's in Miami. And those connections, they, they take quite a bit of effort to, uh, to bring together. Thankfully, we have guests who are really cooperative and really try to work with us on it. The, the technology is getting better, uh, but it's very uh, 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 interesting how all, all of this comes together. I, I've got a, a, a really good show for tonight, but before I get into that, I want to talk a little, just for a moment or two about my next week's guest, who is Latif Warnick, who wrote a book called day one it's uh, the journey of your soul it's pretty interesting he really gets into uh, if you if you happen to be a, 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 a Christian or a recovering Catholic you, you he will uh, help you through some of those issues next week it should be a pretty interesting show uh, I'm looking forward to having Latif on I've got some very very interesting guests tonight with some uh, interesting backgrounds we have uh, uh, we have uh, went blank there for a moment. Tom's prompted me trying to. I have Bridget von Bulow on, and uh, we also have Shen Pen Kemsar, who uh, who is a Tibetan refugee, and they're both lifetime activists, very active in uh, in trying to keep the uh, not keep but to get uh, Tibet freed again. Uh, if you know anything about that, uh, what's going on in Tibet, it's gone on for 60 years over there, and China has just oppressed them. And uh, if you if you watched our, our, our little uh, demo uh, promo video, you can see some of the things that are happening there are really, they're, they're really outrageous, actually. So uh, while well, Tom's going to get, uh, going to bring our guests on, and we will get talking with uh, Shen Pen and with Bridget. We ready, Tom? All right. Good evening. We we finally have gotten this together. Uh, Bridget, how are you? Yes. Hello. How good evening. Good evening. Bridget's in Miami tonight. Uh, you live in Miami, isn't that right, uh, Bridget? Yes. Yes. And 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 Shen Pen, you're up in the cold country. You know what? Well, not some, so, some, not so cold anymore, George. Well, that's good. It's cold. It's cold down here. Listen, somebody has their computer speaker still on. We're getting a, a feedback through there somewhere. It's on. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's not cold up there anymore. Is no, it? no. Actually, it's been very beautiful. Uh, we, as as you guys. Our our weather down here has been unseasonably cold. So, so at any I rate, uh, I, I I I'm really pleased to have both of you on tonight. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Uh, I, I, I need to ask I need to ask uh, Bridget a, a question, and I'm sure you get a lot, Bridget. But I want to get it out of the way quickly because uh, I, I know our viewers are going to be interested. With a last name like Von Bülow, are you are you uh, relatives of the Von, Bülow, Von Bülows from Germany? No, oh, yes, yes. We are not the, the Von Bülows which has a bad name. <laughs> right. We are the, the real ones because um, uh, everybody always asks me the same. Are you involved with this or are you a family of this Klaus Von Bülow? No, we are not. They were Danish and right. of it, uh, he had taken the name of his mother. So he's not a real Von Bülow anyway. So oh, really? We are the Germans. I, yeah, I'm sure you get tired of hearing that, but I want to get that right out of the way. Yeah, you, so uh, you, you, I know the answer. So you were born in I Germany? I hear you very well. George, uh, the only problem I thought I hardly can hear you. Is that right? Uh, let's yeah. see. Let me see what I can do about that. Is that any better for you? 
Yes, a little bit. A little better? Very, very Tom, do they have a way to turn up on, on their headset? You know what? I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm sorry about that. I don't I don't know exactly what we can. Do. Okay, okay, it's dumb. It's dumb. Got you. I got you. Okay, great, great, good. I got you, George. <laughs> that that's yeah. that's superb. So uh, what I want what I want to do to begin with is you know as I've looked at your researched your, your lives, you you guys have done some really interesting things. You live some really interesting lives, and before we get before we get into the activism and what you're involved in and why, I'd like to kind of personalize all this. So, because it's, you know, you have lives that, uh, especially you, Bridget, that you know, wouldn't necessarily uh, get you involved in uh, Tibet and uh, you know the kind of things you do. You have a very full life, from from what I can see. You're a, you're a, 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 a you've got a couple of albums that uh, I, I was able to listen to up on the internet, some previews and. Well, you're a very talented lady. Do you want to give us a little rundown of, of you know, who, who you are and a little background, a little quick bio, if you would? Well, um, the reason I really became involved with Tibet was when I was 11. I was with my parents in India, and I already was at that time always run, running away from home. I mean, not running away far. I right. To the slums. I was hanging around with all the Indians in the slums with the children. I saw little kids and babies and dogs and huh. everything. And from since I'm 11, I also became a Buddhist. I also became a vegetarian. I was very determined that that was sort of my life. And I also always had this enormous wish um, to help people. And I was 13 years old and I was in Switzerland at school. I heard about Tibet. And uh, I, uh, my heart came, went out to Tibet. I wanted to know everything about it, and I became involved with Tibet since I'm 13. Really? And it has ever, yeah, it has been. Uh, I always, I always wanted to be involved with Tibet and and save people, and I, I have done as much as I could till now, and uh, hope that one day really Tibet can be free because we all know what is happening there is just getting worse every day it's a horror story and it is yeah yeah so so i've been a real tibetan so why, I, the other thing i wanted i was curious about is that uh, both uh, you and shen pen used the tibet as a kind of a middle name is that uh, is that part of uh, you know part of the activist uh, where, where it, it recognizes you is that how does that work Yes, Champion, you tell that because uh, it was actually his idea. Oh, is that right? Yes. Shen Pen, you able to hear us? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, great. How, how did you happen to come up with that idea? That's very interesting. It's pretty neat, really. Uh, well, I mean, apart from all sorts of uh, activism that we Tibetans and Tibet supporters uh, do, I, you know, I, I was on um, on Facebook. I mean, I am on Facebook, so. I figured, you know, there's so many people on Facebook, and there's so many younger Tibetans from all over the world using Facebook today. Right. And I, I thought this is a very simple, effortless way to sort of create a unifying sense uh, among all the Tibetans, especially the younger ones uh -huh. who are who are a little bit disconnected um, with with the with with you know with with what's happening in Tibet. And, and I wanted to create a sense of uh, awareness and without having to do much. And just by adding Tibet as our middle name, I started a group called Tibet is my middle name, and I am Tibetan. Uh -huh. um, about six, seven months ago, I think. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I put Tibet as my middle name, and then I asked every Tibet supporter and Tibetan to put Tibet. So I thought it will create a buzz, and now it's sort of become visible. Every time we go on Facebook, you, you will notice a lot of, People with Tibet as their middle name, and what 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 happens is I this, my vision was to create this enormous uh, network on Facebook throughout the world, right? So that it becomes so big that it is newsworthy, and uh, and you know, and 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 the emotions that we Tibetans have towards our cause and our country is unlike unlike uh, you know unlike any any other um, countries with with similar or you know. Um, suppressions and repressions, uh, because um, 
there's you know you have to have that emotional affinity like when you put when i put tibet as my middle name it it has a rhythm and it flows and it feels right right like you will never see a chinese man put uh say his name is um i don't know i can use a famous 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 person's name like uh jet lee i you you know jet china lee it just Mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't emotional Mm -hmm. no no and and because of our nonviolent past and our and our very spiritual um, uh, history and our uh, our connection and our, our love for Tibet, I thought it would be a very patriotic move and uh, you know a good unifying uh, tool. And, well, it's it's pretty interesting. I think it's it must be working pretty well. I'm going to have to go over and uh, and uh, and join that group. That's uh, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah. It's called Tibet is my middle name, huh? Yes, that's the group. All right, I'll, I'll I'll get hooked up over there for sure because I I am like definitely behind your 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 uh, activism and your movement. I thank you. I, my first my first real uh, uh, I guess awareness of Tibet didn't it came through Lobsang Rampa. Have you have you heard of that particular author? He he wrote a book called uh, he wrote several books back in the seventies and in the early eighties, and the one was. Uh, about your your uh, the uh, 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 eye of the soul, I think it was called, uh, but it was very very powerful book had uh, a real change effect on me. So let's talk a little bit about while, while we've got you, uh, Shen Pen. Let's talk about your lineage. Your father's, uh, you know, you sent me a link to your father. I went over and looked at his website. He's a very interesting guy. Uh, g- give us a little rundown of of uh, your lineage of where you know how you came about and and, uh, and what's what happened. Your father was actually a refugee, and and, and were you born at that time? Um, yes, I was born in uh, uh, in Darjeeling, India. Uh huh. And I was the first son in my family to be, to be born in exile. Right. And uh, my father, along with uh, some of his siblings at that time, and uh, my grandparents, they escaped from the Himalayas to the Himalayas, just like um, you know. All the other hundred thousand Tibetans, right, uh, along with Dalai Lama, so they made uh, their refuge in Darjeeling, India, which is almost, you know, very close borderline to the uh, to China, and, right, uh, northern northeastern tip of India. How how were you? Re- how was the, your your families received there in Darjeeling? Did was, uh, I mean, growing up there was were you? part of the community where you know sometimes when you have that kind of thing it it can it can get you pretty excluded from you know regular life there but were you accepted into the community oh yeah i mean see what happened was for the longest time because that because i was born there so i did not really have the sense of right you know i'm from tibet or i don't belong here that that wasn't there uh because darjeeling is my birthplace and it is my home too sure and Tibet is my ancestral land. Darjeeling is my birthplace. Canada is my country, and uh, uh, I'm a citizen of Canada. So it's interesting. But yeah, living in Darjeeling was great. People are very, very uh, beautiful people there. Um, uh, the British used to use Darjeeling as their summer summer resort when they when they ruled India. Right. And um, yeah, a lot of colonial um, uh, influences there, and it was it was just beautiful growing up. It's just that you know. As you grow older, and you realize more, and, and you become uh, aware of your your uh, your heritage and, and your ancestors and, and your struggles, then you know. Me personally, I became a lot more involved with this old Tibetan movement, and realizing that I am actually Tibetan, and, and I have given I am given this one life where I can and I should be doing something for my people and. And raising awareness and uh, and being the voice for the voiceless. Well, and it it, it is a matter of being uh, voiceless too, isn't it? It's like without people like you, there I'm sure they would get lost there somewhere. It's uh, you you you're also uh, a, a, a more than just an activist. You're a you're a musician and a filmmaker, and I, the the kind of music you play is really pretty interesting. Oh, you know what? We've lost Bridget somewhere in in the process. No, no, I'm here. You're there. Okay. I'm, we lost yeah, your. We, yeah. Tom says we lost your video, so he's going to try and get you back up oh. on a video. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't lose you. That's that's good. At least we at least we have you here for sure. Uh, 
and, and so you, you, tell us a little bit about your about your music first, uh, if you would. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, before I answer that question, uh, uh, I, I will address your first question a little bit about my Bond lineage. And oh, uh, pl yeah, pl please do. Yeah, I, I would very much like to go into that. And explain a little bit ab about Bond and, and how that fits with Buddhism, if you would. Well, Bond... Uh, Bon is actually the indigenous and and the ancient religion and culture of Tibet. Uh -huh. Today, all the all the cultural aspects and the traditional aspects of Tibetan Buddhism that we see today will, is directly um, inherited from Bon. And the amalgamation of, of Buddhism in Buddhism that came from India and the, the Bon traditional and cultural aspects is is what makes our our Tibetan Buddhism, Buddhism very very unique today. Yes. And, uh, and you know, it's interesting because I always argue about this with, with, uh, with Chinese scholars and every time I have a talk with regarding Tibet politically, because China claims Tibet to be a, you know, part of China. Yes. And, and, and we all know it's, it's their propaganda. And they say that Tibet belongs to China and it has always belonged to China. But interestingly enough, if you look at the Chinese history, it, it, it dates back to about three to 5,000 years. Right. And, and, and Buddhism came to Tibet about a little over 2,000 years ago. Now, the, the Bon tradition, the ancient Bon tradition, and, and uh, um, what we know Tibet as today was anciently called Shangshung. Okay. That was the ancient name. And Shangshung and Tibet existed about 18,000 years ago. Right. You know? So, so according to the Chinese government's logic, you know, because... You know, they say that China, Tibet belongs to China, but Tibet Chinese history is about five thousand years, and Tibetan history, if we really dig, it's about eighteen thousand years. So, so according to their logic, China should belong to Tibet. <laughs> if you use that, absolutely. Well, there's quite a there's quite a break in modern times too, isn't there? As far as any claim they they thought they had uh, that were yeah, they. Yeah, of course. I mean, see, it, it's it's interesting because um, it's a classic case of of bullying. And, and, you know, the whole world, especially all the, all the first world countries and all the Western countries, everybody knows, all the citizens, all the leaders, the presidents, the prime ministers, they all know that China has some major human rights issues in that country. For a sure. A lot of people think that Tibet is their only problem. No, China has a lot of internal problems, and they are going to implode from within. That is inevitable. They are going to implode. There is the Xinjiang province, the eastern Turkestan. There's the inner Mongolia. There's the Falun Gong people. There's the Tibetan case. Now, the only reason why Tibetan issue is so um, powerful and so out there today is because of our method. You know, there's a lot of cases, a lot of causes, and a lot of problems around the world. There's the Middle East. There's Dafu. There's Afghanistan. There's Iraq. You know, there's Burma. There's everywhere. But what sets Tibetan issue apart, and I'm not being biased here, is that, you know, the Tibetan struggle is the only struggle that has not taken uh, the means of violence. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And we are the only country in the history of modern mankind that has not retaliated in any form of major violence. You know, they 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 have over you know over 50, 50 years or so now, uh, the Chinese government and the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, has destroyed Tibet and has has brutalized and raped Tibet. Yes. And the whole world knows about it, but because of all the bilateral relations and 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 all the all the economic ties and all the debt and all the cheap labor and, and resulting from the cheap labor, all the cheap goods that we get to, in Walmart and everywhere else today, we don't really care. You know why? Because it doesn't directly affect us. It doesn't bother us. Right. In the long run, if, if, if Americans and Canadians and British and Australians and Jap Japan and around the world, if we are not careful, you know, I mean, the Chinese government, I, we have nothing against the Chinese people, but the Chinese government is, is way more cold and lethal than any other tyrant this world has ever seen. Ever it seen, and they're, and they're willing to wait centuries to get to, to the, you know, to bring their, their power into play. You know, and so they're very, right. very patient. I, 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 see, I don't like, I don't want to blame them entirely because, you know, we, the, the, the free world, us from people from the free world, the government of the free world, we are actually enabling them. We are equipping them. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You look at, you look at, the, the most powerful speech in the world politically is the president of the United States. 
and and President Obama stood and 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 uh, he 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 wanted to change. He wanted to bring democracy, and he there's the pretty much the whole world, the free democratic world, has so much hope in him. But the Chinese, we've created such a situation where the Chinese government can call them directly and and pretty much warn them and scold them, asking them not to meet the Dalai Lama, asking them not to engage in Tibetan politics and Tibetan talks. They say. So I mean, if we think about it, you know, this is what the world has become today. China, well, can come, they, they can they pick up their phone and they can call the ambassador of U.S. and tell them you guys should not meet Dalai Lama. Who the hell are they to call people from the free, free world to tell us what to do? Well, you know what the you know what the problem is, Shen Pen, and and this is you know like this is where we we really started to get in trouble, and that is. It's like any business. You, you know, your banker is going to have his hand in your business, and your banker is going to direct you. And that's exactly what's going on with China. We, you yeah. know, we've borrowed our way, and we, and as as a country, America should have known. Uh, you know, like a, just watched what happened with Russia when they got involved with the with their wars in Afghanistan, and and the the Cold War was won because Russia went broke, and we're trying to do the same thing. Unfortunately. Yes, we are, and- and if we're not careful, it's going to be worse because, I mean, you, today you look at around, look at everywhere. You know, the Chinese Chinese government is taking over everything. And if that's what we want, then I guess that's what we're going to get. Right. But it's up to us. It's up to us. And and Tibetan issue is the only issue and the only cause. You know, China is not afraid of America. China is not afraid of anybody today. They are mighty. They are powerful. They're economically growing and they're becoming strong and they're huge. But... The only cause and the only people that the Chinese government is is a little nervous about and is, is uh, if I may use the word, uh, afraid, is the Tibetan people and the Dalai Lama. Because what's happening here is China can almost buy every buy their way into everything and everybody. Right. And they, or if, if you cannot buy it, they can crush by military power. But what's happening with the Tibetan cause is no matter how much they try, the exiled Tibetans and, and the the, the mighty Tibetans and, and inside Tibet today, everybody's revolting. But still, we we are we are doing our our, our revolution through a very peaceful means. We're we're directly making it evident that Tibetans are not like the Chinese uh, government. Right. You know, we are not like the Chinese government at all because no matter what we do, we are not going to be violent. And that's the path that the, the uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has has shown us. And us being Tibetan Buddhists, it is against our philosophy and our religion and our principles. But, you know, it is our, it is our right to raise awareness and, 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 and do whatever we can. And, and me personally, you know, apart from being a musician and an and, uh, and, uh, aspiring uh, documentary filmmaker and all that, I, I have, I'm dedicating my life to, to fight for Tibet. And when I say fight, I don't mean guns and all. Right, I am gonna physically. Be voice and I'm never going to be suppressed because they, they can kill us and they can they can bomb us and they can do whatever, but they're never going to take away and kill our philosophy and our our internal self, you know, that pride that we Tibetans have um, of being nonviolent. One of the things, Shen Pen, that, that I, I really appreciated from both you and Bridget as I, you know, researched all this and listened to the things that you do is, is your passion is so so there and so intense. It's like and that kind of thing can't be stopped with enough people. I, I, yeah. We happen to live in some really interesting times when you consider the Internet and the power of the Internet. That that probably is going to help to democratize the whole world at some point. Uh, it'll just bring people up and cause unrest. We've seen it happening in China now. I mean, let me get back to, to, yeah. to, to Bridget just a, a little bit here. Um, Bridget, how did you how did you get? Uh, I mean, I know that at thirteen you were you were you were like interested and it caught your attention. But how did you really get into actively doing something, actively participating? Well, um, yeah, I, I I went also to Nepal. Uh-huh. I couldn't get into Tibet at that time. Um, when I was uh, sixteen, I went to school with schools in Nepal. I met also Tibetans there uh, who were actually in a uh, refugee camp. Uh-huh. And it was the very first time that I saw it really, what was happening to these beautiful people. Um, I collected a lot of clothes in Europe. Yes. I sent a container full of a lot of clothes. <laughs> um, 
And I kept in contact with a lot of the refugees now. They have now all spread all over the world. A lot of them, some of them I still am in contact with. And it's simple. It went just from my love for the people and, and their suffering. And I studied it. I went to university. I studied a lot. I, you know, I did psychology after a PhD in psychology. But the sideline was actually the Tibetan case and also what China was doing and the policy for China. I also always thought that China was going to lose in the long run. I, I, I feel that so very much so. And now, um, nowadays, you hear that actually inside of China, there is a lot of unrest. Uh, happening. A lot of people are very upset that their their freedom is being taken away also in China, with them, with the Chinese people. Um, my fear is, though, that China is so ruthless. And when they feel that their control is being taken away from them, that they're going to hurt so many people. That's the and unfortunate that part, isn't it? And the greatest fear. And, and they already have done it to Tibetans. I mean, when there's a demonstration, the young people, young people for a demonstration, they grab them, they throw them in jail, often you don't hear from them anymore. And then they have sometimes bogus uh, uh, court cases for them. And like, uh, when was it, five months ago, these four, was it four? Young people for the demonstration, they were in jail, they threw them in jail, and then they got shot. I mean, I cried for 24 hours because- So they murdered them. Help them, and they simply all got shot. You know right. why? Because they're, you know, and China is evil. I I can't say any other words on it. I'm not talking about the Chinese people. No, I, I hear 1.2 billion Chinese people, but it is the government. And yeah, we must stop them, and we will because there is the whole world is slowly but surely uh, waking up. Um, I always believe in when. China actually invaded uh, Tibet, um, if we had had internet and people were more educated... Changed everything, wouldn't happened. it? Yes. Yeah, I couldn't no. agree more. But if the, the world was asleep, nobody knew anything. Things don't... Well, you know, I think I think that you know, I think Bridget, the timing is so really vital here. When you when you yes. when you look at the other things that are going on in the world, and a big part of why spiritual but not religious is here is to be a voice on this end of it for consciousness transformation to move us out of that dark nature into our light nature into that that better side of us. And there are huge numbers of people who are involved in that and really trying, working at moving that forward like you're working at moving the activism forward with the, with the, the heritage that, uh, that Tibet has, it's, it's, it's spiritual heritage is, you know, it's very, very yeah. much a part of this. And there's a real dovetail there. At, at some point yeah. that all has to change. Yeah. But I tell you, George, we have an enormous hope. I was actually reading today this book, the book of Tibetan elders, and it says here, and our two prophecies, it says the very first prophecy that was done years ago, and it says, when the iron eagle flies and horses run on wheels, the Tibetan people will be scattered over the earth, and the Dharma will go to the land of the red man. And that was, of course, the prophecy which was made by the oracle from the Tibetans themselves. Uh -huh. And the latest oracle, and it is not from the Tibetan, but it comes from the Tropi, um, that is this, the, 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 the other, the Hopi prophecy. And it says, almost there, when the iron bird flies, the red robed people of the East who have lost their land will appear, and the two brothers from across the great ocean will be reunited. And when I say these words, I get all shivers over my my arms. It's almost like, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I know yeah. this is going to happen. That was the that was a Hopi that was the Hopi uh, uh, prophecy. Yeah. Hopi and the Hopi. That was a Hopi prophecy. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, it is happening. There is this enormous movement all over the world. You can feel it. The people start to wake up and. If we all unite and we all really, you know, speak with politicians, I always wonder about politicians. We, we vote them in, right? Right. And they have these big speeches. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, and stuff like that. How come that so many politicians, the moment they're politicians, 
they become inhuman, humane almost, because they forget what they had promised to do. And we need to all work on, you promised to do this, you promised to help us with this, now show us the promise. And I think um, we have, we are very close to very amazing things happening. Well, you know, I, I, yeah. when, you, when you look at, <laughs> usually those kinds of transformations that you're talking about really begin to occur when there's a lot of pain involved, unfortunately, you know, and here in the United States, I'm not sure how it is in Canada, but, you know, we're, we're looking at a real breakdown of our political system. It's just, you know, it's, if it's not broken, it's real close to being broken and things must change. We, we, you know, we voted for change in the last election, but we're not, unfortunately, not seeing it. It's all gets caught and ground up in the, in the cogs of the, you know, the whole thing. Uh, let me go back with with uh, Shen Pen for a minute, and let's. I, I want to talk a little bit about. You made a statement that I find very interesting, and that was that uh, somehow or other, uh, your music has saved your life. Okay, tell us about a bit about that. What? How does that play for you? What What happened? Well, uh, apart from being a Tibetan and a Canadian <coughs> or a Buddhist, you know, I'm just like everybody else. I'm a normal young man yes and uh, growing up because of circumstances and, and because of um, uh, your own personality and your own um, nature or whatever you may um, I, I I I was very angry right a lot of anger rage. hello yes I'm here I'm hearing some okay. yeah so yeah so um, and, and like most people you know uh, most of us conventional human beings, we try to uh, escape or run away or ignore the dark sides that we all possess in us. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I was doing the same. And I, I for, for, for a bit here and there, I did take, I did take the means of um, other ways to deal with it. You know, uh, I partied, I did drinking. Drugs, alcohol, and, and the whole, right. Yes. And, uh, you know, and... And you, you know, we we always escaping, and we're always running away from the dark side. And and I, I personally have always been a very musical person at the same time since I was a little kid. Uh -huh. Growing up in Darjeeling, uh, this is back in the '80s, early '80s, and uh, you know, there was no internet, no CDs. There was uh, cassettes, you know, cassettes and cassette players, which was still very rare. Right. Because, uh, uh, especially in my family, we were not really uh, wealthy. Uh, when we were in Tibet, even though my family and my ancestors were were very, you know, well uh, well off or well to do in Tibet, but thanks to the Chinese invasion, you know, we lost all that, and my grandparents and parents had to start all over again. Stripped it all away, so didn't they? When I was born and yeah, <laughs> when I was born and growing up, um, you know, it was it was uh, not as as uh, we were not as fortunate as as we um, might be today. So my means of my access to Western music was mostly through uh, certain friends or, or tourists that came from Canada, U.S., Australia, England, you know, Europe, and they had their Walkmans back then. Um, uh, you know, the, not the CD player, but we had the Walkmans, right? And they, they had cassettes. So I I, I got really um, into the Western music since then, and especially. I started listening to uh, early when I was very young. I was into Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and absolutely Rush huh. and all the all the rock stuff. But I right. I didn't really have a sense of genre back then. I mean, I listened to Wham and Aha and Pet Shop Boys to you know Led Zeppelin and Grand Funk Railroad and anything anything Western I could get hold of we used to enjoy. Right. So and then after I came to the West here in, in the U.S. and Canada as I was growing older, you know. Um, I started becoming very uh, frustrated in many ways, personally, and just, you know, and then I became more aware of the Tibetan situation, and, and I needed to find an outlet, and the outlet, uh, if I had done taking drinking or drugs, that would have been a very disastrous and, uh, For and sure. negative outlet. For sure, yes. So, yeah, so I fell in, I fell in love with, uh, with heavy metal, and not just heavy metal, especially there's a genre within subgenre within heavy metal called death metal. Uh huh. And 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 I listened, started listening to death metal, and I started playing a little bit, 
and um, today I play death metal. Music. Well, for, for, for those viewers who aren't familiar with death metal, can you give us a little insight on that, a little insight into... <laughs> well, I'll try and simplify it. All right. But uh, basically, death metal is, is uh, very intricate, very um, neo, almost neoclassical. Uh, really? Very amped up. Yes, and, and very fast. See, the, 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 the thing is, there's a, there's a stigma attached with it with metal in general. Yes. And, you know, this is, there's always the difference between mainstream and not mainstream and underground. And the conventional world has been conditioned to think that metal right away is sinister and evil or right. disruptive, loud. And that's what we believe, and most people think that. But if we ask ourselves, how well do we know that? How well have we researched into it to come up with that sort of, um, you know, judgment? Most of us haven't. It's just that it was against the system. It was against uh, a lot of norms. You know, it, 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 it became a rebellious music, and, and governments and, and organizations that were benefiting don't like any sort of rebellion. And, no, it frightened and, uh, them. It actually frightened people. Yes. yes. So they, they were successful. Um, and back, you know, they were successful in, 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 in uh, making it uh, evil, well, making it, presenting it as evil, you know, a lot of people, I'm not sure if they know, this whole, in, in music and in movies, today we see the PG sign. Right. You know, parental guidance. Right. You know, it, it actually started with uh, with heavy metal. Really? And Yes, back in the day, typical, uh, what's the name, um, Al Gore's wife. Right. Back in the 80s, uh, there was a band, I'm not a big fan of that band, but they were a metal band, sort of a glam metal band called Twisted Sister. Sure, I'm familiar. And, and and they had a song called "We're Not Gonna Take It." Uh huh. And uh, and then the the government and Al Gore's wife back then uh, they revolted and parents and churches and and and, and uh, a lot of churches revolted, saying that it's it's blasphemy, it's sinister, it's evil, it's uh, it's it's deep, you know, it's negative. So they 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 had a court case and they brought him to court and then you know they came up with that uh, resolution where they had to put PG. But uh, coming back to death metal now, uh, what death metal is today is uh, it's, it's, it's very popular, um, especially in Scandinavia. In oh, is Sweden, that right? In Finland, Norway. Uh-huh. And, and death metal is a, is a genre, uh, from a subgenre of metal, and it is very intricate, very, very tight, and it is the only genre. Um, and and I, I, I urge people who might disagree with me, I urge them to actually be non unbiased, non biased and do a research if they would like to disagree with me. It is the only genre that has the most dedicated fans in the world and it is the only genre that sounds better live than recording. Oh really? That's <laughs> and, interesting. And, uh, interesting. Yeah, and, and you have to be a really, really good musician in order to play in a good death metal band. You know, it's it's very intricate, it's it's very it takes a lot of precision, a lot of rehearsal, a lot of practice. And there's not much drugs or drinking involved. It's just a very, very uh, high-paced adrenaline, it's very rush, lots of rush music. And, and uh, you know, there, uh, some musicologists have even said, if Beethoven, if Beethoven and Mozart and Paganini and Bach, if these people were alive today, they would only want to play in metal bands. Oh, that's because interesting. Uh, uh, that makes sense to me, too. It is the only only genre of music that is as that is intricate, that is complex, that is uh, that is out of the box thinking, and that is challenging, and uh, and it is fun. And so this was a real so, so this was a real release for you for some of the anger that you were feeling. I mean, we uh, listen at, at, at that young age we were angry anyhow, or at least I was, and most of the people of I do. And then you, you you put on top of that your your refugee status, and you know not in the country your father's origin and i suspect you were really pretty angry well, yeah, and, and like like most people around the world you know um, i i was just a normal kid but but had a lot of you know a lot of angst and, and there's so much i want to do and there's so much uh, uh you know problems around the world and and i needed an outlet and and thanks to my music heavy metal and my band and my guitars you know, I found an outlet, and I release all my, I channel all my dark side. Instead of running away from my dark side, you know, instead of running away, I came, I turned around, and I went and faced the dark side, and I shook hands with it and embraced it and, and, and channeled it through my music. 
and uh, well, have a lot more commerce to make. I, I, I totally understand <laughs> embracing your, your dark side. The, I, I've written a book called Mastering the Light, and a good share of that is exactly about that, this journey into the dark side and, and coming to a place where you can make peace with it and put your arm around it, like you said, and embrace I, you know, that, what that makes me really curious with Bridget, because I listen to Bridget's music and nothing could be further from uh, death metal. Dark side. A absolutely. Your, yours is, is uh, very peaceful and melodic and not that, you know, heavy metal isn't melodic, but how do you, how did you two, <laughs> how did you two get hooked okay, we, up? Here? We, we got to be careful here, John. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm on some shaky ground, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you want to ask me about it? <laughs> well, my my question is how I, I, how did how did the two of you meet, and how did you get connected up where you're you're doing this activism together, and it's uh, it's it's a very interesting alignment. Well, um, we started the United Nations for Free Tibet, which a lot of people have actually not understood because they thought that we were the United Nations. Then I got a lot of we got a lot of reactions from people from the United Nations is not doing anything and they're terrible and whatever. So we started the United Nations for Free Tibet because we want to unite the nation sure. to help Free Tibet. And it has grown extremely fast and um Gentleman and I started talking and um he's making this phenomenal documentary and from both sides, we can do so very much. We have now a whole team already within our organization. It's growing. We have people in Belgium. We have people in the UK. We have, truthfully, um, people coming to us to really help unite it, to be united. And uh -huh. that's, um, in short, how it is. So you become you, you become kind of a hub yeah. for this. And is that is yes. For yeah. and, uh, yes. If I, if I may add to that, uh, yeah, please. Bridget, uh, Bridget is, uh, and and you know, I also wanted to thank everybody around the world that that is listening to this and watching this. All the non-Tibetans who are Tibet supporters from around the world, I personally would like to, on behalf of each and every single Tibetan, I'd like to thank you guys for supporting Tibet and believing in our cause and believing that it is a fair and just cause. Um, personally, people like Bridget, I mean, you know, it's. It's amazing, and it is it is so commendable, and and it 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 it, it, it touches my heart in, in in ways that I can't explain to, to to get their support and to to see how much they care about our cause, and and there are people like that all over now. It's really I'm impressed. Worried. It's really impressive, isn't it? When you when you look at what's it going is, on. It is. It so is did did, did you did you meet physically, or were you at some you know some kind of a meeting, or did you meet on the internet, or how so did how did that come? Has, happened was um, it's actually uh, it's Facebook right and because, <laughs> Facebook, yes. because, you know because uh, apart from being a musician and, and, a, and a filmmaker right now you know I'm also an activist and I there's not a single day not a single day goes by when I don't talk about Tibet right and um, and I know most of my circle and my friends are all non-Tibetan my my lifestyle is very non-Tibetan as many people say <laughs> But, uh, right. but I talk about Tibet every day, and, and, and I started this uh, Tibet is my middle name um, campaign, online campaign on Tibet, and Bridget, and uh -huh. a lot of other people, Tibet supporters joined, and then we became friends through Facebook. Uh -huh. and, and Bridget, um, now coming back to the United Nations for a free Tibet, right. and if people want to get more uh, information, I'll give you guys the website real quick. It's Tom can United put that up on the, you, you have that, you have that website for the, the you, well, go ahead and tell us what it is, and then Tom will pick it up it and put. Basically, it's basically United Nations number four. Uh huh. Free Tibet dot com. Get that, Tom. And, uh, All right. Yeah. And 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 uh, so United Nations for a Free Tibet was basically conceived. The initial idea was conceived by by uh, Bridget. Oh and, really? And and she <laughs> probably yes. Very very. <laughs> wow. Had this vision. She said that there is so many support groups and there's so many organizations that fight for Tibet in our own ways. I personally, I fight for it individually through my music, through whatever ways I can. I do a lot of talks, right? Uh, public talks and stuff. So I, you know, she came up with the idea that why not join forces, everybody yeah. together, and why not unite all the nations to support for this yeah. cause. 
So uh, she she's the chairperson of, of uh, United Nations for a Future Bet, and I'm one of the board members now with her. And we have some amazing, incredible uh, members that I personally have met and know. Uh, there's uh, there's Michelle. Michelle is in, in uh, uh, Connecticut. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, and there are people uh, like Bridget said in Belgium, UK, all over the world. And this and it is truly becoming a United Nations for a Peace Tibet. And if people go there, they 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 can read and they can find out ways to support Tibet and find out what Tibet has become today. And 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 they can also see what sort of BS propaganda the Chinese government uses. And 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 we are here to expose that. And 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 Tibet needs your support. Tibet needs the attention, and, and please take time, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, spread the word, and, uh, and Tibet needs to be free. And not just for Tibet, and I say this in a very, very deep sense, if people think about it very, very carefully, Tibet independence, you know, this whole peace and nonviolent movement and this Tibet independence and Tibet freedom can change a lot for the world. In fact, it effect, it has an it has an effect on all of us. No question about yes, that. Yes, and, absolutely. And, and and you know we we are like a buffer zone. We're, we're the most peaceful nation in the world. So tell me, and there's you, 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 dead metal. <laughs> right. You've got you've got. I have to have I have to have an aggressive front. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I can the passion that you've got in your voice. I don't think you need much of an aggressive front, uh, Sean Penn. You, you you're just right there. I it's, I, I I really like your passion a lot. Uh, you got you have something going on up in Canada for Tibet here in the next few days, don't you? Is that uh, in Vancouver or is it uh, the tenth or something or twelfth? Well, tenth tenth well, March is uh, March tenth is our uprising day. Right. And, uh, yeah. This is our fifty first uh, uprising day uh, in, uh, since nineteen fifty nine. Uh huh. And 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 all over the world, Tibet Tibetan people and Tibetan supporters in solidarity, we uh, we do a peaceful protest. Uh, typically in front of the Chinese embassies and Chinese consulates. Right. Uh, and I'm going to. I'm going to New York. Are you going uh, to New York? Uh -huh. and I'll, be, I'll be active here in Vancouver and, and in D.C. And, uh, and you know, uh, we, we just need to support this cause. We need, we need, and I'm not speaking as a Tibetan right now. I'm speaking as a human being. Even Absolutely. if I was not a Tibetan, but with the mindset I have today, and with the heart I've developed, I mean, Tibet is a very, very, it, it's all, I can almost say it is, it is one of the most important causes and the most noble cause in the world, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. well, it's certainly the most no, noble heart. cause I'm aware of. Bridget, you're going to, yeah, you're going to go to New York? And, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going. Um, they have a big uh, banner, a 10 foot banner uh, being made right now for the United Nations. I will meet up with Michelle and with some other people as well. And I still want to say about the United Nations for Free Tibet, it really would like to be the umbrella organization of all the organizations in the world. There are so many organizations, and everybody has their own voice with this phenomenal, and we won't take that away, but we need to join to have one very powerful voice, and that's really what the United Nations for Free Tibet is going to do and wants to be as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to New York, and I'm going to be in front of the Chinese uh, embassy as well. And well, you get some, really get some, get them. some, get some pictures up there and send them down to me, and we will get them up on oh, yeah. online. And that Absolutely. I still want to say something about what Shenton. Oh. Please go ahead. ahead. Sorry, George. Um, what Shenton just said about Tibetan cause is the most important one in the world, and you know also why. Tibet is the only nation where it had this incredible history of, of with monasteries, with, 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 with wisdom. There is so much wisdom in the country. And the Chinese, they came in and they pulled those 6,000 monasteries. Most of them have been destroyed, and if they're not destroyed, they've been robbed everything out of it. Well, and they, and they, and they murdered wisdom. masses of monks, too, didn't they? They, oh, they, absolutely. Yeah, it's killed. 1.2 million people have been killed in Tibet alone already. Right. 1.2 million. And it doesn't stop here. And, and, and people, you hear people say, oh, well, you know, it's so great. I love free Tibet and I will slap for a little bit of my, my uh, flag and stuff like that. But th this is not enough. We have to speak up. We have to let people know what the real situation is. It's not just... Oh, let China be nice to them, and you know that at least is something. Right. No, they, it's an it's a 
enemy army sitting in a country. I wonder what America would have done if Japan would have been sitting here still. I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous situation that no one actually comes to their help. And um, it is that hurts me the most, the, the injustice of the whole case of this. Well, okay, I'm finished. well, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, Bridget, uh, is there's no oil in Tibet. Exactly. And that's yeah, but that's I if I actually, uh, George, if yeah. I may add something to that. Oil, Please do. Yes. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. Tibet, the Chinese government, since Tibet was invaded by the Chinese, the Chinese government has successfully extracted. 54 or 54 over 54 billion dollars worth of timber alone exactly. right yeah and they have this massive yeah. plan and they ha they're extracting minerals a lot of tibetans don't know this too and a lot of people don't know even my grandfather like you know tibetans up until our grandfather i like to say we were like the most peacefully ignorant people huh. <laughs> you know because my, my grandparents and all, most of them didn't know there was there was a world outside those mountains. To, uh, the Himalayas simple. was it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's how simple they were. But they didn't know that Tibet was a uranium field. Tibet has gold. Tibet has coal. Tibet yeah. has timber. And and today, uh, the Chinese government has uh, about a I think about over little over a hundred and twenty billion dollars worth of um, mineral extraction plans and stuff going on. And, and, you know, they're, they're basically, like I said earlier on, uh, they're, they're brutalizing, they're corrupting, they're uh, looting, and they're raping our country. Well, I mean, well, exactly, well, unfortunately, you know, I, I, you know, I'd like to um, say that, you know, whatever happened to the native people, unfortunately, in North America, in Canada and U.S., is, is basically happening. Same thing, isn't it? Same thing, yeah. yeah and and today, today the whole world empathizes with the native people native people and and you know i am a big supporter of the native people but you know what we don't if, if the world cares so much then they have to do something about this tibet because 100 years later you know the the then world from you know 100 years later the then world we don't want them to empathize and and feel sorry for for the tibetan people also we you know i don't want tibet to be just witnessed and seen in fancy museums tibet has to no. exist. Tibet exists. Right. Yeah. One of the most ancient cultures and country in the world. Without Tibetan existence, like, see, I'm not even your typical Tibetan. But sure. I understand the urgency and I understand the magnitude Me too. that Tibet exists in. Well, it, be, 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 and I, and I, I'm totally with you on that, uh, but we, we're going to run out of time shortly. And I, I do want to talk a bit about the Dalai Lama and his impact on all of this and his. Uh, I, I believe he won the Nobel Peace Prize in what 80, 1989 and uh, he's been yep. I, I, as I understand it uh, China sees him as being the uh, kind of the ringleader of, uh, of a rebellion and they're uh, they, they see him in a pretty poor light am I right with that? Right well Ch China China has always been tagging you know the Dalai Lama to be a separatist and to be um you know, mastermind, and he's, he's, you know, China claims that Dalai Lama is the evil person behind, but, but the whole world knows, because especially the educated world should know better. You know, the whole world knows that this is nothing but, but their crazy propaganda, which keeps failing. Right. I mean, Dalai Lama, right. Dalai Lama is, is probably the most peaceful and one of the most important human beings to walk this earth, you know? Yes. I, and, I, I and, totally agree. And, I'm... And, and today, the Chinese government is nothing but scared of his his immense Power. capacity yeah. of compassion. The, the Chinese government is, is absolutely in fear and, 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 and nervous uh, when they see the Dalai Lama's uh, love and compassion. And the Dalai Lama is actually not even uh, asking for independence. He's asking for a meaningful autonomy within the Chinese government. Right. But the Chinese, you know, we've had nine, the Tibetan government, exile government has had nine talks with the Chinese and nothing has come out of it. Nothing. And the yeah. Western world, the G8, the G20, you know, everybody, whoever, all the powerful nations in the world, they need to regroup and, and you know, what they need to put their foot down and say, China, this is, this, you know, this needs to stop. And I don't understand, even for the Chinese government, if they actually supported this Tibetan cause and tomorrow if they came around and if they gave Tibet 
uh, what they deserve and if they give Tibet back to the Tibetan people. You know what? With, with the economy and with the power they are getting, they're going to get so much love and respect. Yeah, them. exactly. That's what I said, and too. And it will only yeah. benefit them. I just don't yeah. understand why they can't see it that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have mm-hmm. been neighbors. We will always be neighbors. And we were neighbors for centuries. And we are nothing but neighbors. And Tibet was never a part of China. Unfortunately, that's the way of uh, unfortunately that's the way of power, though. You know, it's like it power is, can be an addiction, power. and and it's like and it's just yes. more and more about power than it is about anything else. Well, it's you know, what do you what do you think? Uh, what do you see? They, I, they, I, I I saw something. Let me just bring it here. It's the Chinese activist draft for the Internet Revolution Declaration. Now, this came out of China. Am, am I right? Yes. Are, are you familiar with that? Yeah, I've seen it. I wonder if it's actually from activists outside of China or in. I do know there are, and it is actually very quiet because nobody's allowed to talk about it yet, but there is, there are some groups, and there's also a uh, Nobel Prize winner, apparently, a Chinese, and they are actually all gearing up right now uh, to, to draft something really massive against China to their own country. But I saw it also, that article you're talking about. I'm not certain if this was in China or actually already the outside group. You don't, don't forget, in China, if anybody does something, they, you, you know, you get shot. I mean, they kill you, they throw you in jail. So I wonder how visible they themselves can organize something like that. Well, um, unfortunately, it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. Sure, it unfortunately, the uh, the uh, Chinese government hired uh, America and I believe even Canada. There were three or four countries who who uh, built this uh, firewall around the internet in China, and they've got like three hundred thousand yeah. people who uh, who uh, watch the conversations and keywords, and they'll pick them they up do. and and, and yeah. You know, I can say from personal experience, I have some friends from childhood friends in, in China right now uh, who I grew up with in, in Darjeeling, and they're, they're studying. And they're, they're, one of my friends is a doctor in China, and uh, he was, he's from Nepal, but he lives in, in, in China. And I can't say his name, uh, but he told me recently you know, that my personal my website and my personal uh, you know, work and stuff, is, is you, know, you can't see it in China. I mean, that's how... That's how Crazy, the Chinese government is. You know, yeah, I, I am a I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to. I'm going to have to stop you. This is. This show has gone. All our shows go go by quickly, but this one is really zoomed by. We've got only <laughs> a, a, a couple of minutes left, and um, I just want to just get maybe a, a sentence or two if I've I've missed anything that Bridget you would like to you know, throw in that we didn't cover mm-hmm. tonight. No, I just want to thank you very much for giving us the chance and also that really that we are so passionate about Tibet. And as you can see, I, I am, you know who I am. I, for me, free Tibet, it is my life um, work that is, and it's going to happen. And I am, my heart is with it. That's all I want to tell you. Shampan, you say it. <laughs> Well, and, and, yeah, and, and, and you got just like about, that, just a couple, just a little bit here, uh, Shampan, well, one last thing is something that just you know, like out of your heart that we haven't talked about. Anything real quick? Yes. Um, you know, on a personal level, apart from you know freeing Tibet and apart from supporting Tibet and our cause, uh, you know I am a musician and I'm I'm a, I'm an aspiring documentary filmmaker. Um, I just finished. Uh, uh, it's it's almost almost three years in the making. Uh, a feature documentary called Journey of a Dream. Yes. And uh, it is it is. Uh, it is a juxtaposition of the Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetan struggle and heavy metal, and uh, and it is it is due uh, sometime this fall, uh, but most likely it'll be out totally early next year in the festivals and stuff. And uh, uh, it is directed and written by me and uh, produced and co-produced and co-written by uh, by Tamara, uh, who lives in Colorado and um, is a big Tibet supporter herself, and uh, and this this. This film needs your support, and please check it out. Um, the website is journeyofadreammovie.com, and my website is shenpen.com. And um, yes, thank you very much, George. Oh, oh thank you. You've been up there in Florida. You've been. Thank you, Bridget, for being who you are and doing what you do. And thanks to all the Tibet supporters and all the listeners. Yes. 
We need to help this cause. We need to help each other. We need to coexist. We, we've kind of hit. We've kind of. We've kind of hit the end, Sean Penn. That's. Uh, I'm going to have. I'm going to have to let you go. You listen. You're. I, I love your passion. The two of you've been great guests. Listen, Sean Penn. We're going to try and get uh, your father on a show, and we we would like to think about doing a father son. And I don't know who would be the most powerful in that one. If I've got any indication at all here, Dad is going to be overwhelming. You would, you would, you would be, you would be looking at a lion and a tiger. Will I get a word? Will I get a word in edgewise on that? I'm not sure. Listen, thank you very much for calling, and we're going to have to hang up now, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank okay. Bye, Stuart. Bye, Tom. Bye. Good, good night now. Bye, bye. I, I guess we've we've hit the end of the uh, of the evening here. I wish we had another half hour or an hour to, to talk with these folks. We didn't really even get into uh, so much into Bridget's background. She's a, a, a fine lady, and it's just uh, it's really pretty neat to see her doing this. So we'll be back next week. Remember, I've got uh, Latif Warnick. We got a great show, and be sure to accentuate the positive and have a fantastic week.